Thomas Alive to Die presents Kinney Shoes. Son of a bankrupt general store proprietor in upstate New York, George R. Kinney spent more than a decade working as a clerk for footwear manufacturers and paying off his father's debts. In 1894, he invested his remaining savings in a retail shoe store in Waverly, New York. By passing jobbers and independent wholesale distributors, Kinney bought footwear in large quantities directly from factories and sold them at the lowest possible prices but for cash only. Mindful of his father's policy of extending credit to customers which became disastrous, Kinney generally held to the motto shoes on the shelf or money in a till. During the following years Kinney opened a number of other shoe stores in New York and Pennsylvania in collaboration with managers who bought shares in the enterprises and became partners. Kinney was the head buyer purchasing shoes from manufacturers for 80 cents a pair and discouraging his managers from selling them for more than 98 cents. The stores operated on month-to-month -month leases and were quickly closed if they were unprofitable. Clerks were paid poorly but were rewarded with profit sharing in the form of bonuses. There were 15 Kinney stores in 1903 the year Kinney moved his headquarters from Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania to Manhattan where the previous year he had become the first retailer in New York City to sell shoes for under a dollar. Accordingly Kinney's footwear had a steady working class clientele. In Pennsylvania's anthracite coal mining region a Kinney stronghold miners could buy shoes on time despite the company's usual cash and carry policy. Especially popular was the durable rubber and felt wound socket boot which kept feet warm and comfortable down in the mines for $2.98. By 1914 the number of Kinney stores had grown to 40 with total sales of $3 million. By the end of 1916 George Kinney had built the largest footwear chain in America with 56 stores stretching as far west as Illinois. The following year a closely held company called G.R. Kinney Company Incorporated was incorporated in New York replacing the former combination of partnerships. Kinney who owned the largest number of shares in the new enterprise died in 1919 and was succeeded as president by an old friend and longtime associate Ed Crump. By that year there were more than 60 stores with combined annual sales of almost $14 million. In order to keep footwear costs down and to maintain an adequate supply of merchandise Kinney had decided before his death to enter the shoe manufacturing businesses. Four factories were acquired in 1919 each specializing in a different line of footwear. The following year another manufacturer was purchased and a new plant built. A large warehousing and distribution center was opened in 1921 in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. By 1926 Kinney factories were producing about 14,000 pairs of shoes a day and supplying 60% of the merchandise sold in Kinney stores. The company also was buying and selling hosiery from the largest mills in the eastern United States and had been selling shoe polishes, laces and brushes almost from its inception. During the growing prosperity of the 1920s Kinney found it possible to pass on higher manufacturing and raw materials costs to its customers. It repositioned itself as the largest exclusive family footwear chain serving the middle class with popular priced staple shoes of good quality selling for as much as $5.98. The company also began placing national radio and print advertisements and bought the nationally famous educator brand of corrective shoes from its Boston owners. Between 1923 and 1929 Kinney opened 158 new stores extending its reach to nearly every mid-sized city east of the Mississippi. In 1929 there were 366 Kinney stores in 38 states and 295 cities. The company employed more than 1,400 people and earned $933,549 on nearly $20.9 million in net sales. Its common stock first listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 1923 reached a 1929 high of $44 a share not topped until 1955. The stock market crash of October 1929 ended this period of prosperity. Kinney stock much of it bought on margin fell to 50 cents a share. 
The following year Andre Mertzanoff an astute investor acquired a controlling interest in the company but he soon found that Kinney's troubles were just beginning. By 1932 it had 60 more stores than in 1929 but because of the general economic collapse only half the volume of total sales. One week a Brooklyn store posted sales of just 25 cents. Kinney lost money in 1931, 1932 and 1933. Stock dividend payments were halted in 1931 and did not resume on common shares until 1946. During the mid-1930s Kinney closed many unprofitable stores dropping the total number to 321 by 1937. Many of the remaining stores were refurbished or moved to better locations. Management established cost controls and centralized purchasing for the factories and ordering for the stores assigning each store a specific quota of every item in stock. World War II posed different problems. The federal government sharply curtailed supplies of raw materials and imposed price ceilings and strict regulations on inventories and styles. Consumers were limited to one pair of leather shoes every six months. Kinney experimented with sole materials like rope, canvas, compressed paper, plastic scraps and carpet bottoms. Its factories produced more than two million boots for the armed forces about one quarter of their total output. They also manufactured combat footwear for the Soviet Union. After World War II and the subsequent population exodus to the suburbs Kinney was quick to recognize and exploit the trend. It opened its first suburban store in Alexandria, Virginia in 1947. Within five years the company had also opened five large stores in urban strip centers dash rows of stores with big parking lots along main roads near new housing developments. In 1954 Kinney opened its first freestanding roadside store in Berlin, Connecticut. These suburban stores had complete inventories of 1,000 styles in about 6,000 square feet of space dwarfing the traditional downtown stores. In 1954 Kinney also entered the West Coast market for the first time. In October 1957 the company opened seven stores in one day in the Los Angeles area. Kinney sold nearly 8.3 million and produced nearly 3 million pairs of shoes in 1955. It had 352 stores that year net sales of $51.7 million and net income of $1.7 million. All these figures were records. The price of its stock rose as high as $69 a share compared to an average of $18 in 1951. Nevertheless Kinney lacked the financial resources to expand further and several large stockholders wanted to sell. In 1956 the company was purchased by Brown Shoe Company of St. Louis then the nation's fourth largest shoe manufacturer and third largest retailer. Brown produced several nationally advertised brands such as Buster Brown and supplied the Regal Shoe stores. The deal ran into opposition from the U.S. Department of Justice which maintained that it would violate federal antitrust laws by giving Brown excessive market power. Brown spent millions of dollars fighting a federal lawsuit but eventually lost its case in the courts in 1962. In 1963 Kinney was sold by Brown to the F.W. Woolworth Company for $45 million in cash and promissory notes. During its years under Brown however Kinney continued to increase its number of stores and volume of sales plowing its profits back into the operation. Outmoded manufacturing plants were replaced by new one-story air-conditioned factories on the Brown model. In fiscal 1962 Kinney earned about $2.5 million on sales of just under $100 million and operated 570 stores. Kinney was Woolworth's first acquisition since the variety store chain's formation in 1912. Renamed the Kinney Shoe Corporation it retained its own management and control over its finances. The company began to move upscale in 1964 with Fling's a new in-house brand for young women. Soon it was opening 60 to 70 shoe stores a year. It also opened its first leased shoe departments in 1964 in Woolworth's Woolco discount stores. Within three years the new Co division operated 100 leased departments. It also began to operate leased shoe departments in other discount stores. 
In 1965, Kinney moved its retail operations into Canada first in six Wool Coast stores and then in two shopping centers. In 1967, the company achieved its 24th consecutive year of record sales, opening 90 new retail units. A new factory for boys' shoes was opened that year in Romney, West Virginia, and a large new distribution center in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Kinney Shoes of Canada acquired its second factory. In 1969 it purchased two more Canadian shoe factories and the Montreal-based chain of H. Lewis and Sons. By the end of 1968 Kinney had 716 stores and 157 lease departments. That year it acquired two women's lingerie companies which it held only briefly and started a necktie manufacturing operation which it sold in 1975. It also bought Williams the Showman Australia's oldest shoe chain. By 1974 Kinney sales had reached $358 million a year. More than 90% of its retail sales came from suburban stores compared to 100% from downtown locations 25 years earlier. Between 1971 and 1973 136 U.S. regional shopping centers opened and Kinney had retail units in 134 of these. On assuming the company's presidency in 1974 Richard L. Anderson announced his aim to have a unit in every major shopping center with freestanding stores only to be built in areas with no shopping centers. He also vowed to build a new factory every two years and to keep them filled throughout the year. In 1974 Kinney had 940 stores and was manufacturing 40,000 pairs of shoes daily in 11 domestic plants. Also in 1974 Kinney opened its Foot Locker Sports Specialty Division to retail branded athletic footwear and accessories none of it under the Kinney label. Another new division was created for Susie's Casuals the group founded in 1968 that comprised 85 women's boutiques in major mall locations. Kinney's sales reached $495 million for the fiscal year ended January 31, 1975. In 1976 it operated 1,449 stores and 291 lease departments in other stores. Kinney dubbed itself the Great American Shoe Store in the 1970s promoting itself through network television commercials featuring country and western singer Ken Berry. The company mounted an enormously successful publicity campaign around the bicentennial in 1976 and sponsored walking tours of America and Great American Running Trails. In 1979 it launched the Kinney Cross Country Championships, the first national competition for high school runners. The first Foot Locker opened in 1974 near Los Angeles with shoes for running, hiking, track and field, basketball, bowling, golf, roller skating and ice skating. Within five years some 70-foot locker stores were racking up a total of $20 million in sales. Meanwhile Kinney's 14 manufacturing plants reached peak production of 53,000 pairs of shoes a day in 1978. The company's growth in this period was phenomenal lifting it to fourth place among shoe companies in the United States. It passed the $1 billion mark in annual sales in 1980 and operated 2,115 stores that year not counting 368 lease departments. However these figures obscured a pattern of shrinking sales growth and profit margins that began in 1979 and continued in the early 1980s. Kinney's operating profit margin rose steadily from 1976 to a peak of 12.9% in 1978 then declined to 10.6% in 1979 and 9.3% in 1980 when the company had operating income of $96 million. Sales per square foot in Kinney's stores dropped 5.7% in 1980. Soon after an increasingly troubled Woolworth for the first time began to draw on Kinney's profits to help pay its dividends. When Woolworth closed its wool co-operations in the United States in 1982 taking a $600 million loss Kinney's Stull Co. division was also closed. Kinney's best performer in this period was Foot Locker which in mid-1982 was operating 316 units in the United States and Canada. By the following year when Foot Locker had 522 stores athletic footwear accounted for half of the company's sales. 
The first lady foot locker store opened in 1982 selling women's athletic footwear apparel and accessories. Also in that year Kinney recruited Fred L, a Canadian boutique to sell branded high fashion women's shoes in the United States. Kids Foot Locker was launched in 1986 and Athletic Shoe Factory was acquired in 1984 to combat discounters. When running began to fall out of fashion in the mid-1980s Foot Locker highlighted basketball developing the Foot Locker Slam Fest. And during 1987 and 1988 Kinney merged two sporting goods chains it had acquired to create Champ Sports Mall stores offering apparel and footwear as well as athletic hardware and accessories. Other Kinney segments were not doing as well. Its shoe stores concentrating on leather shoes in the $25 to $40 range had been criticized for lack of fashion direction and were not expanding rapidly in number. And a flood of imports plus the rising popularity of athletic footwear had taken its toll on Kinney's shoe manufacturing operations. In 1989 only five shoe factories remained all in Pennsylvania. By 1994 there were only three turning out about 13,000 pairs a day. The rest of Kinney's shoe supply was coming from Asia. By late 1991 the number of Kinney shoe stores was down to 1,312 with its sales for the year expected to be down 3% to $688 million. Foot Locker by contrast had expanded to 1,352 stores in the United States and sales of $1.5 billion. Champ's sales had grown from $18 million in 1987 to an estimated $397 million in 1991. In 1992 some 300 underperforming Kinney shoe stores were dropped and in 1993 another 300 were closed. Some of them were to be converted to specialty formats. In 1994 Kinney was the largest of Woolworth's divisions contributing $3.5 billion in sales and providing 60% of the parent company's profits. It was operating more than 4,500 stores. Foot Locker with more than 1,700 had moved into Europe, Mexico and Australia with plans to expand into Asia and was located in virtually every U.S. mall. In February 1995 Woolworth split Kinney into two separate divisions. The athletic footwear and apparel division was given operation of more than 4,100 stores worldwide including the Foot Locker Group and Champs Sports Stores. Kinney Shoe Corporation President and Chief Executive William DeVries was appointed to hold the same posts in this division. The specialty footwear division was given operation of Kinney's manufacturing facilities and 655 stores in the United States under the names Kinney Foot Quarters Colorado and Basics. On September 16, 1998 the Venator Group formerly known as Woolworth announced that Kinney's 467 shoe stores and 103 foot quarters stores would close. The Foot Locker division started in 1974 continues to this day with Venator changing its name in 2001 to Foot Locker. Foot Locker also maintains the trademarks of the Kinney and Woolworth brands. Hello Americans, stop dragging your feet. Wear Kinney's when you're gonna go out on a date. Look great. But do you know your feet need a little love? Kinney knows. What an agonizing enterprise and hard kind of day you spend working overtime. You live in small. You when you, you need shoes for it all to say comfort and style. If you're young at heart or young enough to remember, come to Kinney. If you have any fond memories, please indicate it at the comments below. Thanks for watching, subscribe and like.